Hey guys, we're back with a continuation of the HALA 1500 project, okay? We started off and we were shooting some groups. We had the original stock on there, we took that off, right? And we decided to drop the HALA 15 in the new Bravo, the, well, new to this rifle, like the KRG Bravo chassis. And made a world of a difference in, in terms of group size. We went from like one and a half inch groups down to, I just shot one today. Uh, five inches at about 0.71 inch group. Right, there was a six shot down here. I don't know why I loaded six rounds, but I was getting some muzzle velocities, so I think I just want to get as many rounds as possible. But anyway, so we basically cut that groups, those group sizes in half, right? And we also added a Area 419, the Area 419 Hellfire brake. Very, very, very cool. Like that a lot really tames the recoil, keeps that scope right on target, shot after shot. So that was a huge improvement. Um, and then we went and I switched up and we threw a Harris, the S, the swivel uh, bipod on here. What, what else did we do? Well, those pretty, that's pretty much it for just the changes and any um, upgrades we made to the Howl. All in all, this whole package around a thousand dollars not including the scopes or the mounts or anything but the rifle itself right six hundred dollars for the rifle then we threw it in the krg so that's another 350 so we're at 950 okay so we're at, with the area 419 break i'm using that on several different guns right so we could swap bull so we could include that in the price um, but if we didn't you know we're around a thousand bucks for a very effective and very accurate rifle, right? That you could actually compete with. You could, you can shoot, you can just, if you just wanna go to the range and plink. Um, but you know, if people are getting the, the Bravo KRG, you're probably gonna to wanna to do some more, um, more precise long range stuff with that, right? And when I took this out to distance, what was surprising was it was very accurate, very repeatable. Um, the Bravo KRG chassis does help with that. Um, just getting and having that customizable and custom fit when you're getting behind that rifle, right? I really like the palm swell here, being able to get that thumb in there. I'll do a whole separate video on the KRG Bravo, but overall, this gun was able to get out to 1214. The first day that I took it out, like long range, really stretching it out, right? We had hits at 1214 yards. And then I, I dialed it back in to around the 630 yard mark. We were just shooting, I was just shooting positional, standing, kneeling, stuff like that. And what was really cool was I started, I had 147 grain, just ball ammo. And I'm like, let me, let me just try that out. And at 600 yards, I'm able to shoot all those targets. And that's, that's shooting positionally, right? Standing, kneeling. Um, so that was really cool. So this barrel's a very good barrel, right? How I makes accurate rifles. They're not um, as they're not as prolific as Tikas, Remingtons, um, Savages, right? They're made in Japan. Not a lot of people even know about them. Um, I say when I was calling up stores, like, "Hey, do you have a Howa?" And they're like, oh, "What?" I'm like, "It's a Howa. It's a Howa 1500." Um, a lot of people don't know about the Howas. So that's good and bad, right? Um, Good because you can get yourself one because not everyone's going to be buying them, but also bad because the aftermarket is not huge. It's not as, it's not as bad as, as some other companies, but um, you know KRG makes them the Bravo stock for it, but they don't do any other. I think you, you, it's only the Bravo, maybe the X-ray, but not the whiskey, right? Um, some of the more higher end stuff, higher end accessories manufacturers, right? They don't make stuff for Howas. Some do. Um, so you have a limited aftermarket, it still is there, right? Limit, but it is slightly limited. If you're gonna be changing out barrels, they don't make really prefits. It's not up to Tika precision where you can just literally get a, a prefit barrel and screw it on. Um, 
But if you're not gonna be shooting that much, and you're not planning on changing out barrels all the time, not a huge deal, not a huge deal. Still a huge fan of the the two-stage trigger on the Howa, really like it. Um, the bolt throw is, is pretty dang smooth. Right? Is it as smooth as the Tika? No, but it's smoother than a lot of the other factory rifles that are out there right now from Remington and Savage. So, you know, pros and cons. But overall, I mean, this thing is 24 inch heavy barrel. It's launching up the 175 grain Sierra Match Kings out there. And, you know, 1200 yards wasn't a problem at all. Within three shots, I think we got a hit on, the, on that target, just dialing in because the wind was coming back and forth. And that was when I was initially just just getting its initial dope, right? I was getting some data for it. I'm like, all right, let's push out the 12 within three shots on target at 1214. So that's pretty cool, right? This, um, the Howa chassis, or the Howa rifle in the KRG chassis it is a really nice combo, and especially if you're trying to keep things on a budget, right? This is pretty freaking good. The only limitation I would say is that if you plan on changing out barrels all the time, and you still can with the Howa, uh, people do make the barrels with the barrel nut, so you can find those. And but if you're going to be doing that, honestly, I would move up to it probably. If, you, if you're going to go with the, with a factory action, I would get a Tika action. If you're not going to be able to get any kind of custom actions, right? I see this as the Howa, and this kind of setup is more of the beginner precision rifle, and then you can always sell this as an upgrade to something else, or just stick with it and keep shooting, right? It's a great gun. It's a great gun. It's gonna give you more capability than I think you can outshoot, if, especially if you're just starting off. But this is a great setup. Um, I know Phil Vallejo over at Modern Day Sniper did a, did a budget, and he took a Tika, put it in a KR, uh, did he put it in a KRG or a, it was a KRG either a whiskey or, I'm not sure if it was the Bravo. Um, but you know, the Tika, buying that brand new, a thousand bucks, this is 600, so. This is more of a budget, and we have a Vortex Strike Eagle, right? So I think he was running a Collies or a something expensive, something super expensive. Um, good scope, great scope, right? But realistic budget, uh, Vortex Strike Eagle, super solid budget optic. Um, I think it's one of the best for the price. I don't think there's. I've been using the. Um, Arc and optics, and I'm going to do a video on that as well. But the Vortex Strike Eagle is probably one of the best in its price range of values. Bangs for your buck, you're going to get for a scope, hands down. Um, it's it's a fantastic scope, good glass. It has all the features that you're going to need to get going to get started. Right? Is it the end all be all scopes? No. Same thing with this rifle, but this whole setup is good enough to get you going and good enough to get to, to make you feel comfortable behind the gun, right? And when I say comfortable, I mean you trust in your equipment. Uh, you know that this gun is gonna have repeatable accuracy, the optic is gonna have repeatable tracking, and they won't fail you, right? So that's the whole setup. Super excited for it. I'm gonna be shooting a match this weekend. I'm gonna be trying her out. She's, she's ready to go, right? We're gonna take the training wheels off and we're gonna get going. So this is the new setup. I'm gonna keep shooting this summer, and we'll see how she goes. Uh, but yeah, I think for, for the budget, around a thousand dollars, probably one of the one of the best setups in terms of, of quality, accuracy, and uh, customizable features in the stock. Right, it's probably the best.